Dime lo que, dime lo que, dime lo que. Captain Zevin here, back at it again with some more One Piece content. There may not be a chapter, but we definitely got some predictions. So I'm gonna predict that you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with all your friends. Come on, let's break that 30. Let's break 30, guys. And without further ado, let's get right into this. So predictions chapter for chapter 1032. Well, we left off last chapter with Sanji finally made, you know, he did the phone call to Zoro to kill him if he's not in the right state of mind, and he resolved himself to take down Queen. All right, so I think the chapter would most likely start with where we left off and continue the fight. So I'm hoping that we get a full chapter dedicated to this fight. Uh, I would love to see one or two chapters dedicated to this fight, possibly three, because, you know, now we're getting into Sanji, Zoro, Luffy fight. So I kind of want Sanji and Zoro to have like three chapters dedicated to their fight and then Luffy another three to five chapters. Maybe that seems like a lot, but I just feel that or maybe 2-2-3, two, two and three, or 2-2-4, two, two and four. but, you know, I want to see my guys fight, come on, like, they're going all out, and these are going to be their toughest fights ever, so, I want to get that fleshed out, now, the anime's been doing a great job with fleshing things out, I mean, did you guys peep that King versus Zoro? That was some gas right there, but, you know, Right now, predicting that Sanji and Queen are about to bust out some new moves. I'm pretty sure that, I mean, I don't even know what to expect with Queen anymore after the freaking snake attack. I, oh my goodness, I never laughed so hard. Like, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. So I'm expecting another funny moment with Queen. And I'm curious to see just how he would play that. And then with Sanji, you know, it's curious because he disappeared. And Queen was like, where'd he go? Is that more tech? And Sanji said, well, come on, stop soaking the fire. Like, I am already burning hot. And just kicks him from the front. So there's a theory that now he has the raid Su abilities naturally i think that'd be an interesting concept all right you don't have the Su anymore but the abilities that came with it are now embedded into your person that would be very very interesting i don't know i don't think odo will go that route but hey it imagine if he does i mean that no one knew how Sanji was going to reconcile with himself with this. But he said, screw the suit. And after this fight, I'll figure this out. Now, I don't think Sanji actually hit that, that girl. I think something happened. You know, maybe he instinctively deflected an attack for her. And it still bounced onto her. And all she saw was Sanji, so she's assuming that he did it. There, that that gap and not seeing the hit, you know Oda loves to play with that. So, I don't think Sanji hit her. But, I think, not this next chapter, but the one after that, maybe we'll get a little bit more clarity on that. And if we don't, it's going to be saved for much later. Which is fine. That's perfectly fine. Now... Another question is whether Queen is awakened or not. I think it'd be pretty dope if him and King were awakened because as of right now, it was, you know, we only have two Yonko crews really fleshed out. And only Katakuri was awakened from the Big Mom Pirates. So what if King and Queen are awakened on the Beast Pirates? That'd be pretty sick. And his awakening just, would he go full dinosaur and no more cyborg? Or would he have mixed the two so that now his awakening 
even though you kind of lose sense of self because of the cyborg stuff, he actually retains his self, almost like a program. So he has more control and is not just wildly flailing about. Or what if he just straight up has full control on his awakening and he just controls that power? Now, I'm pretty sure that an awakened Zoan has a similar trait to the Su Long form where it just drains a crap ton of energy. So they probably can't stay in that form for extended period of times. Because um, when you think of the jailers, you know, they were always awakened. But, you know, they got up. They did their thing and then be knocked out, but we don't really know what the awakened form looks like. Or if, you know, we don't know much of the awakened Zoans other than they're just a lost third year uh, hyper regen. So whether they physically alter, that's TBA. You know, maybe we'll find out with them. Now, another thing that would be interesting, if we don't get a fully dedicated chapter to Sanji versus Queen, which I really hope there is, what else would Oda slide in there? I think he adds more CP0 stuff if he slides anything else in there. And, you know, that's kind of setting up for Brooke holding off CP0 so that Robin can escape. And... It'll be really dope because he's the only one of the crew. Well, him and Jimbe had nothing to do with the Any Slabby Water 7 arc. So it'd be interesting if those are the two that end up protecting Robin now from CP0. I have a feeling that Brooke won't be able to do it alone, which is why I'm pretty sure Jimbe is going to be the one that shows up. And... Another person that may or may not show up is also Frankie because, you know, he's kind of just running around right now. So it'd be interesting if those are the three people that are protecting Robin from CP0. And, I'm, and obviously when the rest of the crew gets there, they're going to be like, nope, you are not getting our girl. <laughs> so, yeah. I think we can expect some more Sanji Queen stuff. And another thing is just a lot of internal dialogue with Sanji. Because this fight has the potential to be Sanji's best fight. Not just post time skip, but in the series. Because of all the internal conflict that has built up throughout the new world with Sanji's character. If that is... In it of itself resolved with this fight that would be pretty freaking sick because you know out of all the straw hats he's the one that has so much internal conflict because Usopp's has been in it already resolved back you know back in the any slobby water 7 arc like all of his internal conflicts you know, the majority has been taken care of there. Then you look at Frankie and the little internal conflict he had when they met him at Choppers. You look at Nami's and everything with Arlong Park. Look at Robbins with, you know, the world government chaser. Like, everyone's internal conflicts have been resolved. But Sanji's didn't even really start until we find out on Zo. oh, he's actually a real prince. And it's, we just never got real closure from that. So it's crazy that in Wano, we may be getting that closure. So not only does Sanji have a big role in the Whole Cake Island arc, but now we're getting the closure in the Wano arc alongside with my boy Zoro and his stuff, you know, I, we still have the whole um, Shimotsuki clan stuff. We got, what else? There were, there's been talks about a black blade. Like, they have been hinting at that. You know, back with uh, freaking, what's his name? The bridge, the Unimaru? Was that his name? You know, the fox that can transform? 
you know, he mentions the Black Blade, and then um, Tenguyama mentions the Black Blade stuff, and, you know, Zoro's not dumb. He, like, he is, but, you know, when it comes to his swordsmanship and all that stuff, he takes very close attention, pays very close attention to that. So, you know he's thinking about that. So, that's, you know, but that's for future chapters. I don't think we'll get anything more with the Zoro King fight in the next chapter. It'll probably be the one after or two chapters later. That's what I'm going to guess. So, yeah. Sadly, no chapter this week, but hopefully this helps fill the void in some way. You can help you can help fill the void in my way by hitting that like button. Support your boy. And until then, I will see you next time. Captain Zevin, out.